In this video, we explore the role of interrupts in the fetch, decode, execute cycle as part of how the operating system manages the processor. The purpose of the CPU is to fetch, decode and execute instructions. However, peripherals or software may require attention and therefore need to signal the CPU. There are two ways of doing this. One's called polling, where the CPU checks with each device whether it requires attention. This is inefficient because if a device does not need attention, there was no point checking it. Instead, a system known as interrupts is used. A device sends a signal on the control bus to the CPU to indicate that it requires attention. A simple analogy would be a class of students. The teacher could ask each student in turn if they need help, that would be polling, or could respond only when a student puts up their hand, which would be interrupts. So although we've thought of the CPU as a system that fetches, decodes and executes instructions, continually, in fact what it's actually doing is it's fetching instructions, it's decoding them, it's executing them and then it's checking for interrupts before it goes to fetch the next instruction. If there is an interrupt the processor will need to stop what it's doing in order to service the interrupt instead, to run the code for handling the interrupt known as an interrupt service routine. Now this creates a problem Remember the program counter keeps track of the next instruction in memory. If this has to be changed to the first instruction of the interrupt service routine, then when the interrupt code is finished, how will it know where to return to in the previously executing program? This is solved by using a stack. Let's look at an example. So here in the program counter, we've got the address of the next instruction of the currently executing program, 0110. Now let's imagine at the end of the execution process we check the interrupts and we realise that interrupt A needs servicing. Now what we do is move the contents of the program counter down onto the stack. And this means that we can now move the address of the first instruction of the interrupt service routine into the program counter and we can begin to fetch, decode and execute instructions for the interrupt service routine. When the interrupt service routine is finished, we can then pop back off the stack the address of the next instruction of the program that was executing before the interrupt was called. And then the CPU knows where to continue the instructions before it was interrupted. Now of course life is never quite that simple. Let's look at another example. So the program counter is storing the address of the next instruction and it gets interrupted at the end of the fetch decode execute cycle. So we put the contents of the program counter down onto the stack and the address of the first instruction of the interrupt service routine goes into the program counter and we begin to fetch, decode and execute again. Now at the end of that cycle another interrupt is generated. So what do we do? We move the contents of the program counter down onto the stack and we move the address of the first instruction of the new interrupt service routine into the program counter and we begin to fetch, decode and execute instructions. Now this doesn't always happen because each interrupt is given a priority and it may well be that the priority of the new interrupt is not as great as the one that's currently executing in which case we're going to continue executing the one that we were doing. But let's assume in this example that uh, service routine B is in fact a higher priority than interrupt service A. So when B is complete all we need to do is move the address that was on the stack back into the program counter and we can begin to continue servicing routine A. And when that's complete all we need to do is pop the final value back off the stack into the program counter and we know where to resume the instructions of the program that was executing before it was interrupted twice. Now of course interrupts will always have a higher priority than normal programs that are being executed otherwise the interrupt service routine just wouldn't be called 
Um, let's imagine another scenario where your computer has stopped responding and you want to open the task manager or shut the computer down. The CPU is actually caught in a situation it can't resolve and without you being able to interrupt the cycle by pressing Control alt delete or the power button, you could never recover the situation without pulling the plug. So priorities are important with interrupt service routines. So here are a number of typical interrupts that can occur. There are hardware interrupts, software interrupts, input output interrupts, timer interrupts and others. So typically with hardware, when you press the power or reset button, that generates an interrupt because most switches are not physical switches now, they're logic programmable switches. Maybe you got an error in the memory, a memory parity error, that would generate an interrupt. Maybe an illegal instruction has been encountered if your program is being interpreted. Maybe you get an arithmetic overflow or a new logon request. Maybe the buffer is nearly empty when you're writing data to the hard disk or giving data to a printer. Or maybe you need to signal that the completion of data has occurred and you need to generate an interrupt to tell the CPU that the data that you require is now in the memory. One thing to note here is when you need an input output request, the processor just doesn't just sit idly waiting for that data to transfer, it gets on with another task and therefore it needs to know when the data that it had requested is ready and that's done using interrupts. 